Uh, my name is John Davis, and I'm a producer and recording and mixing engineer, as well as a musician. I grew up um, mostly in the northeast corner of Connecticut in a small town called Pomfret. I grew up in a household with uh, a lot of different music and some instruments and a great record collection and CDs and stuff. So growing up somewhere like that, I think, was facilitated sort of my going pretty deep into music and technology. My style as a musician, as a bass player, is um, sort of a product of all of my influences and the things that I've studied over the years. So, you know, growing up listening to classic rock and jazz and then getting into electronic music and studying jazz at the New School here in New York for a year, that kind of influenced a lot of how I approach music as an improviser. And um, simultaneously as I was studying jazz and I was really getting into electronic music and the dance music scene here in New York like in the early 2000s and so I got really into synthesizers and technology drum machines like you know going out and seeing DJs uh, making electronic music with my friends all of those different things have kind of become distilled together and um, it's um, a bit of a mixing pot you know but I, I think that's probably what gives me a unique perspective um, and the ability to kind of approach a lot of different types of music with some authenticity. I'm not coming just from one style of music. So for the first, you know, 10 years or so that I was here in New York, I was mostly playing as a musician live, playing with my band Nerve, playing with other jazz musicians around the city, doing gigs and, and tours and stuff, and just kind of doing everything live playing wise. But I also started working in studios, wanted to find a way to kind of make some money and help pay rent and stuff by doing uh, the technology side, the recording side. So I got an internship at a studio here in Brooklyn called Studio G. And that went on for a few years and kind of made me realize that that was like a, a valid way to be involved in making a lot of music and especially making records, which is always my favorite part of being in bands was like going into the studio to record. I learned a lot about how that process uh, should work. And it just sort of was like a slow transition over those two decades of starting out in New York only playing and, and doing a little bit of recording for fun and then sort of slowly getting to 50-50 and then kind of realizing that when I have the most fun and it's the most sort of artistically rewarding is when I'm working in the studio making a cool record with a band and finding the magic in, in someone's songs or someone's arrangements and finding some sounds or some creative approaches that help take that music to a level that it wouldn't be able to get to with them on their own or just with like a engineer who's not going to do anything creative or get involved um, like as a producer or as like a more of a collaborator been incredibly fortunate to to collaborate with brad meldow on one the first of which that we did together we won a grammy for that relationship with him is really uh kind of crazy and special because you know he's one of the people i probably listen to more than anyone some of them are a little funnier or more random recording videos for sabian which is a cymbal company with some drummer would come in and play and one of them was Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers and you know he came in and, and he was just like he's like do you have your bass here do you want to just play instead like I don't want to play solo drums and so that was I was like fuck yeah I'll play with Chad Smith you know and so we just set up my stuff and uh we played for like I don't know 40 minutes and they got enough footage and <laughs> that was just like you know my random uh chance playing with a Red Hot Chili Pepper If there's anything that I think uh, would be good advice to, you know, a younger artist or musician, I think it's to sort of remain open-minded about where your career can go, because sometimes like really cool opportunities can kind of come out of nowhere, come from where you don't expect it, you know. And also, I think holding yourself to a level of excellence, but also not um, comparing yourself negatively to, to other people's success or whatever and finding a balance between competition and admiration of your peers where it doesn't turn into resentment or jealousy. All the people that I see who succeed tend to maintain like a pretty positive outlook. Ultimately you want to find enjoyment and, and happiness in what you do and you know I think it's important that that you enjoy it and so as long as you enjoy it, keep doing it. But if you start to not enjoy it, don't hold yourself to, some, to a decision you made in the past and not like it. If you decide you wanna open up a bike shop instead of painting when you're 35, like fine, you know, open, open a bike shop. You, you know, you might regret it, but uh, you know, it's, it's just really important to stay open-minded 
and uh, find different avenues to your own sort of creativity and, and fulfillment. Mm -hmm.